Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Module 4 introduction. Um, thanks again for all of your hard work to this point. Um, we appreciate, appreciate the time and effort that you're spending um, being intentional about your practice and being intentional about the way we support students. So uh, Module 4 focuses on linguistic dynamics during tutoring sessions. And so um, if I step out of the, the practical portion of this for a moment, and we're, we're kind of getting back to a bit of the hypothetical uh, in this module, but uh, we'll certainly go back and we're going to be uh, offer some really practical uh, strategies for English language development in Module 5. But one of the things in one of the things that they emphasize in TESOL instruction um, or TESOL instructional practice is the notion of teacher talk time, uh, TTT or T3, um, they'll call it in, in some texts. And one of the things that teacher talk time does is that it models, certainly models proficiency in language, but it doesn't give any opportunity for students to practice that language. And what's interesting about teacher talk time in working with English language learners is that teacher talk has the opportunity or tutor talk, I guess you don't even have to change the acronym, um, provides the opportunity to gloss over a student's linguistic gaps with the, with the instructor's linguistic proficiency. And in part, um, I think we do this as instructors and as tutors and as academic support professionals. I think we do this because there's an awkwardness to the pauses in the conversation. I think also when we're, we're somebody who's concerned about another person's uh, comfort, as, as I think we all are, we talk to uh, gloss over the fact that the person who we're working with is struggling to find the right words. I, I always assume that teacher talk uh, or tutor talk, as it were, is a result of the best of intentions. But one of the things that those situations can cause or some of the things that those situations can cause are a lack of time on task and is really taking the opportunity for the learner taking away the opportunity, excuse me, for the learner um, to practice. And so um, this presentation in module uh, four really is talking about linguistic dynamics, but the title of the article is Dominance in Peer Tutoring Sessions with English Language Learners. And so just like for the last one, um, this one is about uh, writing, writing instruction. <clears throat> and again, I know that we do a lot of writing instruction across the disciplines. But uh, this is another focus on writing instruction in a writing center. But what I really like about this particular study with this, this article, even though it's a bit old, uh, is that it gives some really specific timetables so I'm, I'm referring to specifically the timetables on, um, let's see, this is page 24, where it talks about the tutor spoke seven minutes to the students every three. In the second, the, the tutor spoke 18 minutes to the students 11, 10 to 8, 14 to 8, 50 to 31. So uh, 50 to 31 being the total. And so if you take all of these isolated examples um, for this one case study, we see that it's almost double the amount of talking time. And if we're thinking about, you know, the ways that um, we prompt students to support themselves and the way that we want to encourage student learning, tutor talk time um, really prefaces the tutor's knowledge and, and instructional space um, to you know, what, what students bring to the table. And so when we're talking about linguistic dominance, 
we're talking about not necessarily a, a dominance in the form of, of um, a power dynamic so much, although certainly the person who's talking uh, controls the conversation. But really, it's about how evenly are you distributing um, the, the discourse in your tutoring sessions? How often are you giving the learner an opportunity to ask questions, the client an opportunity to ask specific questions? Or if you present a concept, are you giving that learner an opportunity to um, respond to that concept or to summarize that concept or to say, can you can you describe what you think that means in your own words? Right. So ideally, learning centers um, like ours should aim for this kind of an egalitarian, a one to one or, or even a student talk time that. Um, that exceeds the tutors. Right, so, so striving for balanced participation um, is, is certainly best practice in uh, tutoring sessions. Um, and one of the things, one of the other things that can happen is that ELL students have an expectation, or at all students, but students have an expectation that the person who is in control of the session is going to address certain things, and they're insistent on those things um, being addressed. With English language learners, often it's hard for them to move beyond, and we heard this a bit in the last article as well, it's hard for them to move beyond surface level fluency and uh, address really deeper meaning level um, concerns. And so in order to address this, <clears throat> and, so, and so as not to feel guilty, like they said in the last article, in order to address this, L1 tutors will oftentimes address uh, those surface level things in spite of, or, uh, in place of the more global revisions that they need. And we've certainly already heard about some of the cultural clashes, um, the rhetorical clashes that can happen. Um, and sometimes it's hard to provide direct advice to a student um, because of those differences. Sometimes we talk through it, we talk through the spaces, or we'll try to. Um, rationalize an idea, right? Sometimes, I'm not sure if anybody else has experienced this, but you find yourself answering, asking and answering the same question because the student um, is making a choice not to, uh, not to participate. Now, there's a couple of things that could be at play here, and I want to make sure I address those. And, and in the next module, we're going to be looking at uh, English language development um, wholesale. And so it's a really overarching kind of way to summarize a lot of the work that we've been doing, but um, <clears throat> there's a period in language acquisition called the silent period uh, where students can understand their receptive language is much better than their productive language. And so there's a couple of things. There's there's anxiety that's at stake. They don't want to misrepresent the things that they know. Uh, they also are processing, right? So they process long enough so that it, it becomes hard for them to respond. And so time, specifically talking time, um, it becomes problematic for a couple of reasons. Uh, when you're talking, you're continually giving the student additional concepts to decode. When you're talking, you're not giving the students an opportunity to ask questions as they occur. Right, so slowing down your pace, slowing down um, you know, your, your speaking rate is going to be important, um, but also minimizing how much you're saying and giving the learner opportunities to ask specific pointed questions, giving them multiple opportunities to write to maybe write the questions down or to point to questions in their notes, or maybe a strategy is, uh, if you feel more comfortable writing it in your L1, your first language, um, and then telling me what you wrote so that they can get those ideas down um, and then they're describing it, right? So all of these are good opportunities to back off of teaching talk time and really facilitate um, student, student interactions. Another thing that you can do, um, you know, as you're thinking about adapting your approaches, Certainly being culturally sensitive, um, 
but but we've addressed that to, to a, a good degree. And, and what I want you to look for in this particular article are some strategies and some um, ideas related to ways to negotiate the session. And you've heard that term, I think, in a couple of the texts that we've read. Um, but how can you make a plan at the beginning of the session where you elicit feedback from the from the client, from the learner, about the kinds of things that they think that they need? And then can you counter that with a structure that you have know that you know from your own experience that's effective and that's useful and that's valuable? Um, and then reflecting those ideas back to that learner. So the more time they produce and the more time they hear that production uh, recited back to them, that time on task is really important at, uh, at certain stages in language development. So I want you to look for some strategies. Um, oh, <laughs> missing an E. I want you to look for some strategies that Bell and Eldridge suggest for fostering understanding and collaboration. I want you to look for um, some linguistic dominance dynamics um, that you can that you can adopt. Uh, that or excuse me, linguistic dynamics that you can adopt without hindering communication. Apologies for the um, error there. Um, and think about how you know effective tutoring. They say peer tutoring, but effective tutoring enhances ELL students' writing, uh, but also uh, impacts their um, their content acquisition, their language acquisition, their uh, spoken fluency, um, and how L1 tutors can contribute to an inclusive learning space. As always, uh, if you have questions or concerns or uh, ideas about this content, um, please feel free to reach out. And once again, thank you so much for uh, your continued efforts.